when you said it, I think every the AJ Brown trade really did change pretty much everyone's expectations and feelings uh, for the most part. You know, I would say that that's kind of put everybody into a stratosphere. Now, the, the most common phrase you probably guys hear right after this, like, yeah, but what about the quarterback? And it's hard to intimately say anything about Jalen Hurts. And yeah, the Tom House stuff, I know where he's all working hard and I have a lot of faith that he'll get there. I just don't think a lot of this fan base does. Obviously, he's a really hard worker. The, the, the you know, everybody wants him to succeed. Um, so I, I, I think it kind of puts everybody still in a little bit of a predicament around that 9-10 win total. But I think this team, because of the schedule, the way it's laid out, could easily see them with 11 games. All right, uh, I'm told we're ready to punch up our first guest. I see him in the green room. He's straightening out his camera, as a matter of fact. Uh, let's see if we can get John Barchard up here. He's checking in from outside. Wait, is this your yeah. backyard, Barchard? Oh, man, no. We're, we're, having, we're having breakfast this morning. So, Wow, I... wow. What? Well, now I'm really impressed. You <laughs> stopped you're in breakfast uh, to visit with me and Jody. Yeah, I, I figured you guys want to want a little atmosphere for uh, for this morning. I'm, thanks for having me on, fellas. It's really great to uh, see you again and talk to you. And uh, Jody, it was great to hear uh, you and Glenn uh, this weekend as yeah, well. Yeah, how about that? Oh. Thank you, buddy. Uh, yeah. So let's jump into it. I need your opinion. John gave his. I'll give mine after yours. Week ten, Washington Commanders come to Philadelphia. Carson Wentz, Wentz his return to the city of brotherly love. Will love be shown by the crowd when he comes out onto the field? Not even one percent. No, all right. Not I'm even. Not. I, I'm. I'm. I'm more. It's interesting because obviously Philadelphia fans tend to have this complex that people are always against them. Uh, I think they're going to be fine pregame. Now in game, I think they're going to be vicious, but I don't think there's a problem in game. Uh, I think pregame it's going to be fine. I'm so. I'm wrong, John. It wouldn't be the first time. I will say that. Johnny uh, B, I am with you. Uh, what I said to Glenn on Sunday was, if you needed to break it down percentage-wise, for me, it's about 90% boos, 10% cheers. Yeah. The boos will well drown out any cheers that Carson Wentz gets. And this is something I do have 30 years of history on. Because I remember, I specifically went down, got there early enough to see when he came out on the field, there were more boos than cheers for Reggie White. <laughs> All-time great, Hall of Famer, Eagles never gave an offer to be to stay a Philadelphia Eagle. Norman Brayman kissed him goodbye as he went out the door. He put on another team's uniform. There were more boos than cheers. And I think it's a bad rap that Philadelphia, oh, they boo there. Yeah, they do. That's what they do. That's what everybody should do. Guy leaves, goes to another team, makes the decision to go elsewhere. I thought Reggie was going to be the exception to the rule because he didn't really even have a chance to decide to stay. No, Carson forced his way out of town. He should be booed from the minute his, his uh, uniform comes out onto the field. And I think Eagle fans will do just that. They yeah, will by the him. way, I want to – you guys have talked me into it. I've evolved. I was – you know, I was – you know, I was trying to get John up and trying to figure out and get him on the show – and then I'm starting to think about people coming back afterwards, non-players like Doug Peterson, I think will be cheered. Um, but yeah, you're probably right now that I think about it. This is like Ben Simmons coming back to yeah. in 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 his career. So well, yeah, I was thinking more of the evolution because I think the fan base has evolved when it comes to older players coming back. Like if Carson comes back after he's retired, I think there will be cheers. Um, the only, in game against a division rival, yeah, I'm probably the, wrong on that one. I was just saying, the only way that I think me and Jody are wrong is if we get it, if we, at week three, when everyone goes down there and takes over FedEx Field, maybe we get it out then enough where there's not as much of a boo, but man, if if they end up kicking their butt week three, that's all they think going to be worse, Jody. <laughs> when he comes home on a Monday night game after everyone's been loaded up. Oh my goodness. So. Well, honestly, the bigger issue is he even going to be there on the Monday night. Right. Is he going to be playing? Done. We is can't he is pushing you know. it. <laughs> yeah. That's, that's the bigger, that's probably the bigger issue. Yeah. Um, as a whole though, John, um, you know, want to get your thoughts. Obviously we haven't seen you in a while. 
uh, the expectations of this team after the draft, because I got a distinct sort of two camps before the draft. Everyone was like, I say it all the time. Jody knows we're not ready. We're not ready to do this. We're not ready to do this, blah, blah, blah. Now, after the draft and after Jordan Davis and A.J. Brown, everybody's like, let's go. Let's go. This is going to be this is going to be a really good football team. Where are you and where are your listeners in that sort of pre-draft, post-draft expectation? Well, when you said it, I think every the A.J. Brown trade really did change pretty much everyone's expectations and feelings uh, for the most part. You know, I would say that that's kind of put everybody into a stratosphere now. The most common phrase you probably guys hear right after this, like, yeah, but what about the quarterback? And it's hard to tangibly say anything about Jalen Hurts. And, yeah, the Tom House stuff, I know we're, he's all working hard, and I have a lot of faith that he'll get there. I just don't think a lot of this fan base does. Obviously, he's a really hard worker. The the, the You know, everybody wants him to succeed. Um, so I, I, I think it kind of puts everybody it's still in a little bit of a predicament around that nine ten win total but i think this team because of the schedule the way it's laid out could easily see them with 11 games uh if everything goes right if everyone stays healthy and this is a, a really good run like this is an nfc championship type of schedule i'm not i don't know if they can get there and i don't know how much howie roseman really values this season and kind of pushing some of those picks in but something that we've kind of theorized a little bit is just listen if this team is is really hot to start and they could be three and one, four and zero oh, with with that with that schedule going into Arizona. Um, maybe it's a lot like Carson Wentz uh, going to that Thursday night game of the Carolina Panthers during that Super Bowl run. That's kind of what Arizona looks like with Jalen Hurts this time around. And if you're four and one, five and zero, oh, are you really not going to push your chips in the middle at a chance to go on a run in the NFC? While most of the quarterbacks you're going to face are in the AFC, you're avoiding pretty much every single one of them this year. And I think what the most uh, who's the who's the best quarterback that they're playing this year, guys? I can't even remember. But it's it's Aaron uh, Rodgers. But after Rogers, that, yeah, he's yeah, pretty good. There's a there's a deep drop off after Aaron Rodgers. Then you have an argument: Is it Kyler Murray? Is it Dak Prescott? Is it Matt Ryan? Is it Kirk Cousins? He got a deep drop after after Aaron Rodgers. Yeah. So I, I, I just think it's uh, it's a schedule that's worth pushing in the, your chips in the middle for if everything ends up going right in the first part of it. And I wouldn't I don't think Howie Roseman thinks twice about it. I really do believe unless there's a massive failure on Jalen Hurts's part that they're going to invest all these picks into players and not quarterbacks. All right. Interesting way you look at it, John. You're saying that they could be three and one shoot maybe before it. Oh, we've said the same thing here on birds. 365, the easy early schedule is something the Eagles must take an advantage of. If they do, um, and you say Howie Roseman reevaluates and goes, damn, yeah, we can win this division. We can make hay in the end. Let me look to upgrade the team on the fly in season prior to the trade deadline, which I don't have in front of me, but usually is around week six or week seven. So four or five weeks in, you're looking to improve the team, maybe willing to give up future draft capital do so what position most likely are they going to be looking upgrade pass rusher <laughs> pass rusher pass rusher pass rusher and that's what you're kind of hoping like maybe one of these top tier teams that are going in you know uh, the rams i i don't i they're fantastic they won the super bowl the whole story it's great are they really going to be able to go back there this year are the cardinals going to be able to hang broncos just got russell wilson the afc west is completely stacked one of those teams aren't going to make it you know, so if if something falters and you're sitting there and Jody by weeks, week seven. So you're going to have plenty of time to evaluate right before the trade deadline. So, you know, I, I think if, if a contender that we think is in the air is shaken loose and they have a premier pass rusher, that's what I would probably probably go after here. John, uh, here's where I'll play devil's advocate with you. If you're needing a pass rusher at the trade deadline, another one, well, you know, that doesn't necessarily mean that Hassan Reddick and Josh Sweat and Brandon Graham have worked out all that well. And right now in the offseason, that looks like the strength of the team, the front seven versus the secondary, uh, where you have massive holes at corner and safety. Um, that wouldn't be a good sign to me if the Eagles were were desperate for a pass rusher at the trade deadline. Well, it's not a good sign to me when you re-sign Derek Barnett either. <laughs> <laughs> 
so so i i get that um yeah you and you're probably right i i well what this is what i don't know what are you doing with brandon graham in this supposedly new look defense you know that's a, that's another part of that i don't I, I still haven't wrapped my head around like is he gonna be is he gonna be more hassan reddick this year than he has been brandon graham in the past and maybe go to some of the old Chip Kelly days where he was playing stand-up linebacker for a few of them or drop him back in coverage. I, I mean, I doubt they have him do that, but I still think that there's this isn't really completely shaped into what, uh, you know, uh, Jonathan Gannon was. And uh, to, uh, I think, everyone's credit uh, here on uh, 365, you guys have pretty much mentioned that too. Like, we're, we're not exactly sure what's going to happen with Fletcher Cox or Hargrave or anything like that after this year either. So, um yeah, I, 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 as much as they've invested in Hassan and all those other guys, I still think there might, there's still some holes in pass rusher. <laughs> I, I like your line of logic about the Eagles being aggressive at the trade deadline, off to a good start. That'll be a good thing. You can find ways to win games, but also acknowledge, yeah, we're not as good in this area. We're lucky we didn't get beat because we have a weakness in this area. Oh, no, John's right. It's the defensive backfield, more so the pass rush. And I'm not sure that pass rush is going to be great. And you and I are on the same page. Why is Derek Barnett here? I uh, don't quite understand that. But it's it's cornerback. They need an upgrade at cornerback. And, yeah, maybe one of these undrafted free agent guys come in and look good the first three weeks playing. I doubt it. They need to improve that now, John. They need to go out and get James Bradbury now. Because if you wait till in season to make a trade, you got to give up one of those draft picks that Howie Roseman loves to covet. You don't have to give up anything other than money to get James Bradbury. Get it done and get it done now. And we don't have to worry about, oh, do we push our chips into the table before the draft day trade trade, the draft day deadline. Okay. Take, uh, tell your producers just to cut that, put it on Twitter at Eagles, because that's exactly how I feel. I don't, can anyone explain why there's not is the is the market softer for James Bradbury than we actually think or something like I don't understand that at all. Does anybody have a, a, any opinion? Well, if the timing, you know, I think the timing hurts Bradbury. Obviously, yeah. everybody has their sort of off season, which is inflated at 90 players. So you've already budgeted. If it were the start of, of free agency and, and the Giants put Bradbury out there right away, I think he's a 10 million a year player. And yeah. I think that's how he feels. So he's sitting out there. I that's where it starts. I imagine for James Bradbury in this camp is 10 million a year. Um, and that's difficult to fit into your budget at this particular point. Now I think ultimately there's going to be enough teams, Kansas city, I've heard Las Vegas, Indianapolis Eagles. Somebody's going to go there. I don't yeah. think it's going to be the Eagles. The Eagles, you know, John, they're very disciplined. If they can get them at one year, eight million, say, hey, you can be a starter like Steve Nelson. I said, much better player than Steve Nelson. But what the Eagles offered Steve Nelson was you're the starting cornerback. You have an opportunity to make some plays opposite Darius Slay. You can get right back into free agency. And he got a nice little deal with Houston. Same thing with Bradbury. He can start from day one. He's going to get plenty of opportunities because people don't want to throw the football at Darius. He's going to yell at me for calling him Darius, but um, <laughs> they don't want to throw the football that way. So he's going to have a chance to make some plays. He's still a good player. He's right back on the free agent market. Maybe he gets $13 million next year. That's what I think is the Eagles selling point with, with James Bradbury. That'd be, can you imagine all this uh, discipline waiting? They get him for $8 million. That would make a lot of Eagles fans happy. Uh, for, for sure. And the other thing I was wondering, what do you guys think about the Jesse Bates situation? In, in Oh, wow, yeah, I was going to bring up Jesse Bates. Now, that, that is a splash move. Now, hey, Jody knows. I laugh at Cincinnati all the time. One of the great, amazing things, I, I don't think people realize how unbelievable it is that the Cincinnati Bengals, with their budget, the way they run their organization, they made the Super Bowl. It is one of the great miracles of life. And they're haggling with their, you know, one of their best defensive players because they don't want to pay him. Could the Eagles swoop in? Now, that's a total difference maker. Right. But, but I, hold, 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 ahead, hold, hold, hold on. Who's the better DB? 
Jesse Bates or James Bradbury? Jesse Bates. I'll give you that for sure. Um, which position has higher value around the league, cornerback or safety? Ooh, uh, uh, yeah. I would Gotta be close. Come on. It's it, it's cornerback. Well, you know it's cornerback. I know it's cornerback. Everybody knows it's cornerback. Most importantly, Howie Roseman knows it's cornerback. I'm not talking about the way the Eagles. I'm talking about how the league values, and that can easily be researched, who gets paid more, corners or safeties. Yeah. Corners do. So that, that ends the conversation. The Eagles are going to set the, the, the market on paying a safety and have to give up draft capital to be able to get this guy. No chance, no shot. There's no way. You, you talk about Howie Roseman being Make patient. Make a splash, And Daddy. the Eagles don't overpay or whatever. And, uh, no. What the Eagles won't be doing is overpaying for a safety, both in salary and in draft compensation just to trade for him and get him. No, they got. They would be better advised, and there's a much better chance they go get a James Bradbury because it's a one-year commitment at less money than you're going to have to pay Jesse Bates to play safety. That's much more up Howie Roseman's sleeve than cutting a deal with the Cincinnati Bengals. Not happening. Well, I can't I can't really argue too much with Jody on that one in terms of. Oh uh, yeah, no, but I would I would the only thing I would say is that Darius Slay is is one of a kind for now. You can deal with Bates, and you probably have to go get two corners no matter what. Anyway, I, I'm not exactly sure what they're going to do, but you have a pretty good mix of just like. Okay, Slay can can go all over the map with wide receiver one, even if it ends up being Tay Gowan at CB two, and you have Jesse Bates behind him. You can run some form of confusing zone coverage that I'm sure Jonathan Gannon would love to do anyway. But Jody's probably right. Realistically, like they already did that same thing with AJ Brown. I don't think they're going to do that with with a safety they don't own value. So uh, I still want it to happen despite uh, Jody's uh, pessimism. Oh yeah. Usually I'm the one who doesn't bring up the pie in the sky stuff. Oh, and because, I'm, I'm yeah. not saying I'm against it. I'm just, yeah. uh, maybe it's because John is poo-pooing the, the Bradbury thing, which I think is smarter and more of a necessity. You want to throw cold water on the Eagles potentially doing something. We have enough history of them not paying a position that they're one of the teams that bow to the author of, well, but the league doesn't value this position. Safety is one of them, and I don't see the Eagles uh, looking to pay uh, top of the market money for a safety and the safety you got to trade for. I just don't see it happening. Well, I'm going to give the fans a little hope, and and I'll throw this to John as well. They were going to pay Marcus Williams. They just, you know, Baltimore went a little bit past where they wanted to go, but they were willing to go over ten million a year. For Marcus Williams to play safety, which is not traditionally what this team would do. So there's a little bit of a door open. And I would argue Jesse Bates, different type of safety, but is a better safety than Marcus Williams. Now you do have to give up, as you mentioned, draft capital as well. Uh, so it's significant from that standpoint. By no stretch of the imagination am I saying this is likely, but because of how cheap the Bengals are, because the Eagles proved that if they like a player, they'll go all in, John Barshard. They will go all in. Does that give you any hope? I, no I mean, ankling up hope, <laughs> especially when the uh, the uh, people that paid uh, Marcus uh, drafted Kyle Hamilton and then put a green helmet on his sticker. Like it was so weird. I don't know what they're doing. So maybe I I think there might be. They have to be doing something. They're not sitting on their hands and going like, yeah, let's go to yeah, play. And, and that's probably what they're doing. The, the third Baltimore safety, Philadelphia native Chuck Clark. That's probably what they're doing. Right. And they but, did ask about Clark on, on draft night as well. Yeah. Let, let's get to some of the cold, hard numbers, though. Bates is uh, refusing to play on the tender, right? And the contract tender for a safety is almost $13 million. $12.9 million. So the Eagles would A, have to give Cincinnati something they'd accept to take the player and then go above and beyond $13 million. And you're telling me, oh, they might have gotten 10, up to 10 with Marcus Williams. There's no way the Eagles are getting into the neighborhood of what Jesse Bates is going to want to get paid. I actually think the numbers would be okay, Jody, just because maybe I'm wrong here and please correct me, but it feels as though the cap is going to go up 
almost 50 to $60 million over the next two years. So I would actually advise everyone that if you're going to pay a safety, if you're going to pay a wide receiver, if you're going to pay a corner long term, do it now because the market in the next two years is going to be extraordinary. So if you can land a long term deal with Bates now, it's going to look pretty significantly happy, just like I'm sure that $16.8 million per year with A.J. Brown's contract is going to look that just as nice, too, in a couple of years when that's all redone. But, but I'm yeah, so there's I, w- I would still say probably doesn't happen. I think Jody's right, but uh, I am uh, I'm more on the uh, let's let's have some silver lining with John McMullen. <laughs> yeah, that's rare that I'm the optimistic one. I'm usually the pes- <laughs> pessimistic one. And by the way, I mean, this is not going to happen. So I'm just doing this for yeah. for talk show Potter. But I will say this and to Jody's point. Generally, when people don't want to play for the franchise tag, it's about one year, right? They want two years, they want three years, they want guaranteed money. So yep. it's not necessarily the average annual value of I got to have over thirteen million. It's about I want thirty million guaranteed over. I want thirty million guaranteed over three years. You might be able to get a better deal than than the franchise tag. And the rare fact of Cincinnati, and they always joke at it from a scouting perspective Jody knows this I you know before all the upheaval John in the Eagle scouting department it was 21 deep Uh, Cincinnati's was five deep Um, Duke Tobin and basically a bunch of interns and they made the Super Bowl so it's a rare advantage to take advantage of a team that is not willing to spend money it doesn't come around that often. That's why I leave the door open just a sliver, uh, just a sliver. Especially when Howie Roseman can get his uh, name in the headlines with another steal of a deal and uh, do the tour and uh, tell Peter Schrager how much his uh, front office is great and, <laughs> you know, on and on and on there. So, yeah. And have I, it repeated again and again and again. All right, but let me, I'm going to fight this fight again. <laughs> Give me, and I trust, I trust both of you guys to be honest here. If the one-year deal, maybe even it goes to two-year deal. If it's advantageous for the Eagles, a two-year deal with money spread out so you can give them less in the first year, um, but then you have a second year. If he just flat out comes in and stinks, you're going to have to pay a price with dead money in the second year. Oh, by the way, I think the chances of that happening with uh, Bradbury is about 5% out of 100. Um, So you can structure the contract, whichever works uh, well for both parties. What do you think the average annual value is going to be for Bradbury and years and Bates and years? Do you think it's more likely the Eagles are going to get into that not eight, nine, maybe topping out a $10 million Bradbury? Because that's all he's going to get right now. The fact that he didn't sign immediately with a team tells you the market is soft. Uh, sometimes leverage changes and somebody gets hurt and that can change the landscape. But right now you'd probably look at him about a $10 million player. Bates is looking at 15. Which do you think is more likely? The Eagles going to spend 10 million on a quarterback or 15 million on a safety? 10 on a corner. <laughs> oh, yeah. No question about it. But yeah. I will say that potential, if, if Bates were to come here, and again, this is pie in the sky, I freely admit it. I, I don't want everyone to get excited. It's going to be the full blown five year deal with two years on the back end that are completely voidable. It's going to be about what are the first two, three years? What is the guaranteed money? But the average annual value that Jody's talking about, yeah, it's going to explode. It's going to be 15, 16 million, but it's not going to be real. So, you know, how much guaranteed money in the first two, maybe three uh, well, years? Then if you want to talk about the guarantee, Marcus Williams' guarantee was, I have it right here in front of me, 37 million. Do we agree that Bates is going to be more? I, I he'd be in the same range. He would be in the same same range. Remember, he's twenty five, and that's the thing. That's what the AJ Brown's twenty. Yeah, he's twenty five. Marcus Williams is 26, 25, so. 20, 25, 26. That's that's the players the Eagles want to give big money and big years to. Right. Young so the players. guaranteed money for Bates, who is younger certainly than Bradbury, would be thirty six, thirty seven, thirty eight, thirty nine million. So guaranteed that money for. Uh, Bradbury is going to be 10, one year. That's it, done. It's going to be a one-year make a deal. Who do you want? You want to lay out 37, 38 million guaranteed or 10 million guaranteed? 
Well, that's a different discussion. Now, John, John can answer that uh, as well. But I would say I want the better player. To me, Bates is a better player. Yeah, same. I mean, like I, if it's, I mean, we're not Howie Roseman, but I'm, <laughs> I, there's no, there's no question that I'm, I would pay heavily uh, and take the ride with Bates and fig. I mean, we're, when we're, I don't, James Bradbury's fine. Like, I don't, I, I think he's good player. Yeah. A little better than Steven Nelson, but not much better. You know, really? I mean, you think he's I, only a little better than Steven Nelson? Yeah. I think he's, I, I mean, what was, what was Steven making last year? Five or seven million? So we're, we're um, not even not four even. And he, was, he was three million and oh, I he, think he I, made a couple million. Uh, so, I mean, like, I don't I don't even I don't think he's six million dollars better than 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 Steven Nelson. And and granted, like, yes, they need somebody in there. But I, I don't I don't think James Bradbury is like the the only the only thing that you have going for you. I think if you Jesse Bates is way more important in the long run, and I would I would absolutely do that because I view him as AJ Brown on the other side. Now, here's an interesting question. I'll leave the last one for me, John. Okay. Um, would you rather have uh, Bradbury and Chuck Clark than Jesse Bates? Then I think can you get a both? Then I think you're really cooking with some gas. Yeah, I would I I would probably be more comfortable going with Brad that, that scenario than if you can give me. If you can give me a, another safety that's 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 on the market along with uh, Bradbury, that's fine. I think that everybody'd be happy with that. Yeah, but I don't know that the Ravens are going to move Chuck Clark. Makes sense. I propose that the minute they traded, uh, excuse me, drafted Kyle Hamilton, hey, you can get your hands on Chuck Clark. Uh, but the Ravens have come out and said they have no interest in dealing him. But like John likes to say here on the show, one of his favorite lines and uh, my favorite as well, they're not under oath. They can say whatever they want now, but they can change their mind a little bit later on down the road. Uh, hey, Mr. Marchand, great catching up with you, brother. Where can people listen to the podcast? Uh, just head on over to uh, any social platform, Bell in the Birdman, uh, dot com, uh, or uh, Apple, Spotify, YouTube, all that fun stuff. Uh, and uh, look forward to talking to you again anytime soon. We'd love to have you guys on the show as well. Done deal. Anytime you need uh, yours truly, at least. McMullen's busy. He works for a living. I just kind of <laughs> hang around the house, watch TV, uh, and anytime, on YouTube John, every anytime. once in a while. Uh, tell uh, Vince Eskimo Quinn we send our regards as well. We will absolutely do that, my friend. Thank you so much, guys. I'll talk to you soon. Thanks. Thanks.